Hi, we're going to deal with some tonguing. Uh, up to this point, you've probably been using a lot of air attacks, which is great because it teaches your lips to respond directly to the air uh, and to avoid spitting sounds out. But now we're going to talk about the details of what happens when you're really tongue. First of all, uh, if you stick your finger over a uh, water faucet and turn the water faucet on and then pull your finger out of the way, it releases the water. That's the same thing that happens inside your mouth. When your air is traveling down and on your initial attack, the tongue has accordioned itself up. There's the top teeth and there's the lower teeth and the tongue is here, it kind of accordions up there, it seals the area, and you breathe at the same time your unconscious will determines whether it's going to be a soft attack or a loud attack. It pulls that tongue down and out of the way, releasing the air, allowing it to attack. Now, uh, that's different than your tongue here, and then it pulls back, and then it strikes, and then it causes a spit, and then it pulls back, and then to stop it, it goes back in and stops it. It's a double action with the, with the spitting action. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. All right. Now, if you'll just uh, exhale. Ta and say this with me. Ta -da 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 You'll notice that your tongue is just kind of flipping up against the front of the top of your mouth with that da 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 sound. It's interrupting the air column, and what happens is it pulses the air. Now move the tongue a little further forward by saying ta 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 Good. Now, let's move our jaw forward, and this time we're going to leave the tip of our tongue pretty much down behind your lower teeth. Like that. Now, for the purpose of this exercise, I want you to tell your lower tongue, your lower tongue, your tongue, the tip of your tongue, although some people have forked tongues, uh, the tip of your tongue is going to stay basically in the area right behind, if not touching, your lower teeth. You're going to let it accordion up. I'm sorry about you having to look at my gross mouth, but that's what's happening in there. Now, let's hear what that sounds like when you release a note like that. First the air comes up, you pull your tongue back down, and the note comes out. depending on how much force you use with the tongue pulling itself out and pressing the air forward, ta, ta, or ta, 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 you have a legato tongue or a uh, more mar martellato type tongue. Now let's talk about, well, how do you make staccato? Well, a true staccato would be made by actually stopping the air, stopping the sound for a split second. Now, if you have a string of quarter notes, you can pretty well do that. But what happens if you have a string of eighth notes? All right, it becomes a gymnastics game. You, you, you just can't make everything work that fast and actually stop the air. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the illusion of a staccato by playing a continuous note and then allowing the tongue to strike the note a little harder than the volume would indicate and your ear perceives a big front to the note but then the note tails off quickly and it gives the illusion that there's a space there. You see how that works? Okay. Now, how do you do a legato tongue that's fast? Well, you just tell your tongue to be a little more relaxed. So you can still do a pretty rapid tongue, uh, but yet do it legato. All right. Now, what's the best exercise to learn how to speed your tongue up? Uh, Rather than sitting and doing these things, to 
et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which tend, which tend to be non-melodic. Uh, they also tend to sap your air pretty quick and cause you to do strange things there. I prefer to use uh, a little movement, which teaches your tongue to float on the column of air, just like a piece of paper in front of a fan would go up and down like that. Now here's the exercise I use, uh, and you can do it at whatever level you want to, low, high, medium, whatever feels comfortable to you, but the gist of it is this. It's da ah, so you're gonna have an initial attack followed by a ah, and the ah really is just because you're lifting the valve. It's not that you do anything with your air, and then you tongue twice. See how that works? Keep the air going just like you're moving the bow on a violin. Now while you're doing that, you want to make sure that the middle and the back of your tongue is laying just as still as possible. And don't try to make it still because that will cause it to tense up. You know, if you want to make something tense up, think about it. That's for sure. If you want to worry about taxes, think about them. If you want to think about the beach, think about that. Well, here we're thinking about the beach. We're relaxing here. And we're just letting the tip of the tongue do the work right up at the front with that accordion-like action. All right? And I, I will say this. Depending on the shape of your mouth, the length of your tongue, I happen to have a very long tongue, and, and sometimes even when I talk, it gets in the way. It gets over my eye teeth, and I can't see what I'm saying. But... Some of you have short tongues. Some of you have a very wide buccal cavity. There are a lot of things that happen in there. But by doing this exercise, regardless of the shape of your tongue and what part exactly is moving, if you'll go by the clear sound and the smoothness of it and the fact that your jaw is out and even and you're getting a nice core balance flow through there, it will be right. doing is you're learning to trust your air to keep moving to relax your tongue to be able to tongue faster. Now you can take that exercise up and when you get it around 144, 152 you'll feel like you've made a lot of progress. Now what you can do next is instead of doing two actual tongues after you go da 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 do three da 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 Now, what you do is you take off the first two now, and we're just going to go ta da da, ta da da, ta da da, on one exhalation. Now, you want to make sure the first couple there I had a tut on the end. Da da da, da da da, you don't want that, you want da da da, da da da, you want the note to naturally uh, project into the room. It would be the same effect as if you hit a bell. And then when you want it to stop, you just didn't let it ring down. You grabbed it, you know, choking it. We don't want to do that. All right? So we're going to do three. Now we're going to do four. Da -da -da -da. But we're going to hold the fourth one a little long. Now when you do the four, you're actually going to feel that what you have is a primary attack. The, the secondary attack is actually going to be up a little higher. Da, 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 da. If you say the word today, 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 you'll notice your tongue sti strikes two separate points in your mouth. That's not the way you tongue, but that's an illustration of what is happening with your tongue when you do that. You train that tip to, to almost da, da, da before it comes back. All right, don't get too scientific about this. Listen to the sound and just think you're, you're in your backyard, you know, playing cowboys and Indians and they come to the rescue and you, rescue and you go, ta-da-da-da, you know, and the Indians are saved because they were coming to their rescue, not the cowboys, or vice versa, depending on where you're at. Okay? Da 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 da, four sixteenths, and then the last one, you know, it could be a, whatever you want it to be. All right, but that's the gist of letting your tongue flow on the air. And rather than try to tongue slowly at first, 
which could bind up your tongue and cause you to do some spitting, I'd really recommend that the first kind of tonguing you do is this kind of a tonguing where you're relaxing your tongue. Ta-da! Even if you're just doing this. You want that concept of the note going through all the time. When you play a phrase on the trumpet, the air never stops. Your tongue may interrupt it. You may cause some accents to happen that swell up and come back down. But that air never stops. but that air has never stopped along the way. Pardon me for the water in my horn there. All right. Um, now, what do you do about tonguing high or tonguing low? Uh, you don't have to change anything other than the air back here. That's why we're gonna learn, we have learned our air core first to move notes up and down. And now we add the tongue in a little bit later in. All right, so remember these exercises where we did this. Now we're just going to add that soft tongue to it. Now you'll notice, if you can see it on my chops here, that when I come back down to the bottom and I'm almost out of air, I deliberately puff my cheeks. Why do I do that? Because I don't want to choke the front because I'm out of air. Let me turn sideways a little bit better so you can see that. See what I'm doing there? I didn't play three or four of them, but I give you the ideas because when I'm coming back down, I can let those relax, which keeps me from doing this. Now, most of that tension is not caused by my air core. Most of the tension was caused by me worrying that I was gonna lose the sound. And that's a big worry when people get soft. They're afraid they're gonna lose the sound. So what you wanna do is you wanna practice ha, ah, softening things up down there. And it works in the same way in the upper range, middle range, and the lower range. All right, so that gets us into tonguing a little bit. Now, as far as multiple tonguing goes, that's gonna come with you and your instructor or along the other way, but it's the same thing. You're going to flow it on the air. Chances are, for most of the things you're going to encounter, if you can tongue 144, 152, 160 with your single tongue, you'll have a much cleaner attack when doing things like da 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 dum, da 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 dum, You know, it's just going to roll off there uh, instead of sounding tutti Now, there are times when they char characteristically want that, that K sound. Uh, but that's a, that's a musicianship question, and we'll leave that to those that teach those kind of things. Uh, do you understand now what we're talking about the tongue? Now, this lesson has been relatively short, you know, maybe eight or ten minutes. But what you've got here in the concept is that just like the air causes the lips to vibrate, the air floats around the tongue to make it work. All right? And the work that happens is up toward the front of the tongue. We're leaving the back of it lay down low. This is another reason why you're way up above the staff. You don't want to be a e because then you're trying to tongue and it can becomes very difficult. When your tongue is laying flat and you're using the front part of it, no matter how much power you've got behind it, it's still going to work. 